You're listening to the Fairies and Folklore Podcast by Renal. I'm dark fantasy author Renal Janssel van Vieren. With nearly a decade of digging around in dusty folklore books, researching creatures of imagination that ignited my curiosity, I'm here to share the folklore in a nutshell and how I reimagined it for my writing in An Origin of the Fae. This is the Fairies and Folklore Podcast. Hi, I'm your host, Rinal Janssen von Vieren. You can just call me Rinal. In today's episode, we're continuing our exploration of the Fae realm. This episode is brought to you by my book, Once, Tales, Myths and Legends of Fairy, available in ebook, paperback and audiobook. Go to renaldemythmaker.com forward slash my hyphen books for more. We are continuing our exploration of the Fey realm. Today's subject, magic and glamour. Folklore in a nutshell by Renal. Magic is as old as the world itself. Traditionally, it is the use of actions, rituals, gestures, symbols and language to evoke and use supernatural forces. It's a belief and practice that's been present since the earliest cultures and continues to have an impact on many cultures today, sometimes in spiritual, religious and even medicinal roles. People have different definitions of magic, ranging from being an illusion, wishful thinking, superstition, to self-hypnosis of those who believe it to be true. People also have different definitions of the world occult, most of it erroneous, connotations with evil. The real definition can be found in a dictionary if you only open your eyes and look. A longer definition from the Collins English Dictionary. Occult. Adjective. 1a. Of or characteristic of magical, mystical or supernatural arts, phenomena or influences. b. As a noun. The occult. 2. Beyond ordinary human understanding. 3. Secret or esoteric. Magical practices have been kept secret for good reasons over time. Where once magical practitioners were welcome to openly practice their craft, times changed and they were subject to torture, persecution and oppression, and not just in fiction like in BBC's Merlin. Magic is, at its core, about the science of Earth's hidden powers. No matter the type of magic you look at, it is all about the energy radiating from the Earth and all living things. Think about the four elements, earth, fire, water, wind. Now add soul to the equation to factor in living creatures. There's the basis for the energy used in magic, magic power or glamour. Harnessing this power is much like using feng shui, literally meaning wind and water, manipulating objects to create good fortune and eliminating disaster while paying attention to natural formations such as valleys and mountains to harmonize one's own energies with them for maximum benefit. For example, roses on their own are powerful enough on their own to work as a tool of seduction, while other flowers might need the presence of lavender, something that theoretically empowers other materials. Witches can use grimoires, spellbooks, to enhance their powers. We'll look at grimoires and witches in a later post. Witches can also bond with the familiar to become stronger. Familiars are supernatural entities who appear in the guise of an animal to assist witches in their practice of magic. The moon can also be harnessed for power. Using moon cycles, various types of magic is performed and power is drawn from the moon to enhance spells. We've already looked at the moon. Witches and others can draw power from nature or from other creatures. If not careful, they draw all magical power from themselves. Magical power is constantly being generated in every individual and all the elements, plants, etc. And though it might seem ludicrous, modern science is the offspring of magical arts, especially alchemy, and things that seem impossible at one point in time becomes commonplace in the future. Magic cannot be seen or touched, but its effects can be felt, much like radioactive energy. No one believes Marie Curie while she laboriously worked on her experiments, until everyone felt the effects of radioactive energy for themselves. Magic and science have a lot in common. Yes, science demands consistent replication of results, and magic prefers unique and individual results. But both refute the concept of coincidence. 
There is something that causes something to happen and should be paid attention to and be analysed. Which means that magic is neither good nor evil. It all rests in the hands and intentions of the practitioner. In folkloric and occult tradition, magic can be divided by colour, black magic and white magic. This usually serves well to show the dichotomy of good and evil. White magic is what we call magic used for selfless purposes. Practitioners of white magic are usually called wise men or women, healers, white witches or wizards. White magic is also often referred to as natural magic. Black magic is the opposite of white magic, as it is used for selfish advancement of an individual. Black magic is usually used in vindictive and destructive ways. And now, for my interpretation of the Fae, in an origin of the Fae, magic and glamour. The mist is what we call the all-consuming, all-powerful magic that runs raw through druids and kushi. Other humans with magic need talismans to tap into the mist. Normal fae can fashion glamour, weaker magic than that of the kushi, out of their connection with the mist. All fae can store glamour in plants, crystals and wind orbs or light orbs for later to use. Humans can use magic in various forms, harnessing it from nature, storing it in amulets, crystals and talismans for later use, siphoning it from other beings, usually other witches and wizards, or using incantations along with talismans to use the mist in its rawest form. Magic must be earned or inherited for humans to wield it. Some go on quests to earn the right to use magic, while others are born with it in their blood. As a little bonus, let's look at the translation of magic and glamour into Afrikaans. Toerkrag in betovering. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode of the Fairies and Folklore podcast and that you've learned something new about fairy. Remember that you can get a transcript of this episode in the description. If you're new to the podcast, why not go and grab your free copy of Unseen, the second book in the fairy tale series, on my website, renaldemythmaker.com. Loads of folklore, magic and danger await. Take care.